Hello everyone, welcome back to another session in Dentistry and More. Today we have a very important topic, not just on an academic point, on a clinical point of view, that is medical emergencies in dental practice. So any dentist can face this problem. That is a emergency situation while or before or after the dental procedures. So understanding the problem or diagnosing the problem as early as possible and knowing the management of the same problem is very much essential to save the person's life and to have a successful dental practice. So let's learn the various medical emergencies and its management in detail. So we have classifications uh, broadly into the conditions such as unconsciousness, seizures, respiratory emergencies, cardiovascular emergencies, drug related emergencies. So we'll uh, go into detail one by one. So what exactly is uh, an emergency? So emergency is nothing but a serious and unexpected situation which requires an immediate action. So it is a unforeseen combination of circumstances or the resulting state that calls for an immediate action. So we'll start with unconsciousness. So we have syncope, hypotension and hypoglycemia. So syncope, so we'll start with syncope. Okay. Syncope uh, is a short loss of consciousness and muscle strength which is characterized by a fast onset, short duration and spontaneous recovery. And the causes of syncope we can uh, broadly classify it under CNS symptoms, CVS symptoms and vascular symptoms, vascular and other symptoms vascular and other causes so in cns symptoms uh, cns is basically related to brain so we have a synonym that is head h e a d h for hypoxia or hypoglycemia hypoglycemia E for epilepsy sorry then anxiety then the disorders of brain stem disorders of brain stem so one of the causes can be presented as an another medical emergency but we are talking about unconsciousness okay so epilepsy can be another medical emergency and hypoglycemia can be another one so we are talking about the causes of syncope so we have cns causes that is hypoxia or hypoglycemia epilepsy anxiety and disorders of brainstem whereas the cvs cause we have heart so CNS is related to head and CVS is related to heart. So H4 heart attack, E4 embolism. So in all these conditions, there will be syncope. So we need to rule out the conditions and get into a proper conclusion. Then A4 aortic stenosis. then R4 arrhythmia so we are putting R here arrhythmia and T4 tachycardia so all will result in syncope whereas the vascular and other causes so we'll write it here vascular and other causes we have vessels
in which uh, V4 vasovagal causes vasovagal causes which are common faint then E4 electrolyte abnormalities such as hypercalcemia electrolyte problem such as hypercalcemia then uh, the situational problems situational such as uh, cough sneeze then s4 subclavian steel syndrome then e4 ent causes it can be glossopharyngeal neuralgia glossopharyngeal neuralgia then l4 low systemic uh, vascular resistance low systemic vascular resistance and the s4 sensitive carotid sinus carotid sinus so all are various causes of syncope we have cns cause cvs cause and vascular and other causes now let's see the symptoms that is what important on a uh, clinical point of view so there will be breathing that is irregular jerky and gasping type of breathing dilated pupils convulsive movements bradycardia that means uh, less than 50 beats per minute tachycardia is increasing uh, manner then the pulse will be weak thready pulse there will be loss of consciousness partial or complete airway obstruction these are the symptoms we may face when a person is going into unconsciousness so how do we manage syncope the first thing is position okay we need to position the patient properly that is a supine position supine position where the brain and heart at same level with feet elevated slightly by 10 to 15 degree okay so this is the brain and this should be the heart but the feet elevated okay feet should be elevated that is 15 degree this is just a diagrammatic representation where the brain heart and feet so this is important we should be kept the patient in a supine position with the feet elevated at 10 to 15 degrees so don't forget this 10 to 15 degree positioning of feet then we can go for abc that is airway checking breathing checking and circulation so you know how to check airway how to check breathing and how to check circulation okay after that we need to go for definite management so definite treatment that is first we should monitor the vital signs then we can administer aromatic ammonia aromatic ammonia is respiratory irritant so it can bring back the person consciousness or we can administer atropin atropin 0.1 gram per ml so these are the definite management of syncope that is first thing is positioning then the checking airway breathing and circulation then we go for definite treatment that is aromatic ammonia and atropin that is 0.1 gram per ml now let's learn about seizure so seizure is nothing but a paroxysmal disorder of cerebral function which is characterized by an attack involving changes in the state of consciousness motor activity or sensory phenomena so usually uh, sudden and onset uh, and of brief duration so epilepsy Uh, it's a chronic disorder in which nerve cell activity in the brain is disturbed causing the seizure 
so seizure symptoms include the blank staring look the chewing uh, fumbling then the wandering patient it will be wandering and the patient will be shaking and patient's speech will be very confused so how do we manage this or prevent this so prevention is always better so if a patient is known for epileptic make sure that the patient has taken the regular dose of anticonvulsant on the day of treatment so many patients might not be telling that they are patient of epilepsy or they are having previous seizure attacks uh, they are uh, hiding the information because they just want the treatment to get done because if they uh, tell the fact that they are being epileptic uh, some dentists might not uh, start doing treatment but we need to extract the information from the patient somehow because uh, the emergencies we are the one who are supposed to manage so we need to ask the patient if there is any history of epilepsy any history of seizures so the first thing is uh, we need to instruct the patient to alert yourself or the alert the dentist as the aura of impending seizure manifests itself because patient will be having that beginning uh, signs or symptoms so ask them to alert you as soon as the patient is having that aura of impending seizure manifest so keep life support equipments ready in case of an emergency status epilepticus so we can uh, follow the first stage such as uh, explain to others and block any hazards in nearby area and speak very calmly always track time and uh, always be uh, near to the patient uh, and we need to uh, calm the patient once the patient is slowly recovers from the seizure attack so this uh, seizure is a self limiting emergency uh, the first thing is uh, positioning uh, we should keep the patient in a supine position with uh, patient placed on a very flat surface okay so the supine position on a flat surface then remove uh, dangerous objects from the mouth and around the patient such as uh, sharp instruments uh, needles so such things should be uh, sharps should be kept away from the patient then loosen any tight clothing avoid restraining the patient in case if the patient is not recovering that is a patient seizure is not getting over within 10 minutes we need to declare status epilepticus and we should start with the definite care so definitive care we should start if it is not manageable or if the patient is not recovering within 10 minutes so what are what are the definite treatment that is diazepam the first thing is diazepam so we should have diazepam in our clinic that is 10 mg that is basically iv per minute that is for every 10 minutes so how many clinics can do this it's a questionable thing but still this is a definite treatment for the status epilepticus then second one is pheno barbiton so if the patient is epileptic or if we are suspecting a seizure attack always keep it ready but it's better to get the treatment done in a hospital setup and this is 100 to 200 mg per minute that is all also iv intravenously then we have carbamazepine and phenytoin so these four drugs can be given for a epileptic patient on a definitive care next is hypoglycemia hypoglycemia is a clinical syndrome in which low serum glucose okay so low serum glucose which leads to 
symptoms of sympatho adrenal activation so sometimes patient comes with low uh, low glucose level that is empty stomach empty stomach so or patients with morning insulin tablets or insulin shots which further decreases the glucose level so what happens is blood glucose level will be low because insulin will be reducing the glucose level so it will be less than 50 min mg per 100 ml so usually it is <laughs> the rbs should be around 110 then it will lead to anxiety then that again results into weakness dizziness pale skin depressed respiration ultimately the patient goes to syncope or loss of consciousness so this is the most problem we face hypoglycemia patient comes with empty stomach or patients take a insulin shot or insulin injection or insulin tablets so the symptoms as we said unconsciousness poor coordination anger or bad temper pale color confusion there will be disorientation sudden hunger excessive sweating trembling so management is a little bit easy compared to other one because glucose and sugar containing beverages administered orally to conscious patient for rapidly the patients will recover so we need to give a uh, glucose that is a concept so or, or we can give candy bars fruits cheese etc um that is for the mild cases uh or we can go for iv dextrose but facilities should be there so this iv dextrose uh should be indicated for patients with altered consciousness and uh during any restriction of oral intake is there we can go for iv so that is uh, 20 to 25 ml of 50% um, 20 to 25 ml of 50 percentage dextrose or we can give glucagon that is 1 mg 1 mg okay it can be given intramuscular or subcutaneous so both routes we can administer glucagon or we can give metformin or sulfonyl ureas sulfonyl ureas so that is how we manage hypoglycemia basically we can uh, give the glucose containing uh, beverages or candies fruits cheese or something in a mild to moderate cases but severe hypoglycemia where we uh, have restriction of oral intake and uh, altered consciousness we should start iv dextrose 20 to 25 ml that is 50 percentage dextrose iv then glucagon or glucagon 1 mg intramuscular or subcutaneous or we can go for metformin or sulfonyl ureas next we have respiratory emergencies so airway obstruction comes under respiratory emergency it is uh, occur due to any pathology on the airway any entrapment of dental instruments dental instrument entrapment such as files or even tooth can be fall into trachea the patient uh, always demonstrates symptoms ranging from coughing gagging to choking so gasping with pain so the aspirated objects may pass into the trachea or esophagus okay so we might need to go for a x-ray chest x-ray to confirm it and this is very easily manageable the first thing is prevention as by rubber dam so if we have a rubber dam there is zero percentage of falling the uh, dental instruments or anything into the trachea or esophagus then we can use oral packing then proper chair positioning or 
a good dental assistant so all these can help preventing uh, falling of these dental instruments into trachea so once uh, we have a situation we can manage it by uh, re-establishing of airway uh, such as uh, back pillows we can give back pillows and you must have heard about this manoeuvre that is hemlich manoeuvre hemlich manoeuvre then chest trots chest trust and finger sweep finger sweep or forceful cuffing so all these are attempts to take the objects out of the trachea or esophagus that is back blows we can give bl blows to the back side of the patient then hemorrhage manner we need to stand behind the patient and keep one leg between the legs of the patient we need to circle the abdomen that is just below the sternum and we need to push inside that is hemorrhage manner then we can give chest thrust we can go for finger sweep or forceful cuffing next we have hyperventilation so it is a excessive rate and depth of respiration so that leads to abnormal loss of carbon dioxide so carbon dioxide is lost that is hyperventilation so we need both oxygen and carbon dioxide so if we lose carbon dioxide in excessive amount we are in a hypoventilated state so this carbon dioxide will be lost from the blood which predisposes to stress and anxiety which is characterized by rapid short strained breath short rapid and strained breath then there will be uh, palpitations dizziness chest muscle fatigue and cold sweats so prevention of hyperventilation is reduce patient stress and anxiousness by any means and the operator should stay calm and also make the patient be relaxed then we can give a paper bag where the exhaled air is inhaled using this paper bag so this will uh, bring certain amount of carbon dioxide back to his system so that he can be properly ventilated so this point of breathing into back is to rebreathe the exhaled carbon dioxide to bring the body back to normal state so that is a paper bag so simple paper bag can help you in this situation that is hyperventilation or we can manage it with benzodiazepines that is diazepam 2 to 5 mg intramuscular or intravenously 3 to 4 hours and lorazepam lorazepam which is 2 to 3 mg oral can be given uh, bd or td twice a day or thrice a day then triazolam triazolam which is 0.25 to 0.5 mg then alprazolam alprazolam which is again 0.25 to 0.5 mg the next medical emergency is asthma which is a clinical state of hyper reactivity of the tracheobronchial tree characterized by recurrent paroxysm of dyspnea and wheezing so basically we need to manage it by recognize the symptoms then we need to stop the dental procedure pa patient position should be upright or bending forward with arms straight ahead then we can administer bronchodilators mostly this asthmatic patients will be carrying a bronchodilator or if patient is asthmatic having a bronchodilator with the patient during the procedure so once a patient uses bronchodilator and this asthma terminates 
we can continue with general procedure if it is not we need to declare status asthmaticus and call for emergency medical service or shift the patient to a better medical facility next we have the cardiovascular emergencies so in cardiovascular emergency we have the mi that is myocardial infarction it is a clinical syndrome caused by deficient coronary arterial blood supply which results in ischemia to a region of the myocardium and causing cellular death and necrosis so the predisposing factors are atherosclerosis coronary artery disease or coronary thrombosis occlusion and spasm and unnecessary stress so we can prevent it by avoiding over stressing the patient and supplemental oxygen should be there during the treatment and pain control during the therapy uh, using appropriate use of local anesthesia and also we can uh, go for psycho sedation psycho sedation then elective dental care is avoided until at least 6 months after a mi then inferior alveolar and psa nerve blocks should be avoided due to high risk of hemorrhage okay so inferior alveolar nerve block and psa should be avoided in mi patients because there is high chance of uh, hemorrhage so management uh, basically by antiplatelets so antiplatelets we have clopidogrel that is 75 mg oral dose once daily then ticlopidin ticlopidin which is uh, 250 mg 12 hours that is uh, bd then dipyridamol dipyridamol that is 75 to 100 mg td oral or we can uh, go for beta blockers beta blockers they are propanolol propanolol that is 40 mg oral dose trice trice day then metoprolol metoprolol that is 100 mg bd 100 mg bd or etanolol we can go for single dose that is 50 mg Fifty mg should be given BD twice a day, or hundred mg we can give once a day OD. That is about myocardial infarction. So the next one is angina pectoris. That is a condition marked by severe pain in the chest, often also spreading to the shoulders, arms, and neck, due to inadequate blood supply to the heart. so there are various types stable variant um, unstable angina so basically prevention is by stress reduction reassuring the patient and psycho sedation all the things uh, we applied in mi patients also can be applied here in angina pectoris so the management uh, by recognize the problem then discontinue dental treatment activate the emergency then positioning the patient upright comfortably assess and perform bls then we should start definite management using beta blockers so the drug related emergency is what we have next that is overdose that is an overdose is when a person ingests or takes more than normal of recommended or prescribed amount of drug it can be accidental or intentional so in a dental practice the most common overdose age is by local anesthesia so the most common symptoms confusion talkativeness blurred speech muscle twitching facial tremor headache tinnitus drowsiness disorientation elevated blood pressure heart rate respiratory rate if uncontrolled there will be generalized tonic clonic seizures and generalized cns carbopathy 
so we can manage it by administer our bls basic life support then 100 percent oxygen and anti-convulsants then allow recovery to occur in case of continuation of symptoms we need to immediately transfer to a better medical facility so uh, that is about overdose and we have allergy problem that is another medical emergency allergy is uh, nothing but a hypersensitive state of skin and various mucosa acquired through the exposure to a particular allergen then the re-exposure to which produces a increased uh, immersion capacity to react so occurring via expression of ig the anaphylaxis is a common one so anaphylaxis uh, we have discussed in detail uh, you can see here uh, in previous videos so here in allergy normal allergy we have red itchy watery eyes sneezing congestion and runny nose and sore throat postnatal drip and cough so we can manage it by reassuring the patient uh, sometimes we need to initiate the bls then administer antihistamine okay antihistamine diphenhydramine that is 50 mg or epinephrine that is a uh, 0.12 0.3 ml one is to thousand im then we need to monitor the vitals regularly so that is all about various medical emergencies in dental practice we have discussed in detail about most of the conditions so it was uh, classified in the beginning based on a certain general category uh, such as the loss of consciousness and uh, respiratory emergencies seizures cardiovascular emergencies and drug related emergencies so in unconsciousness uh, we have syncope hypotension and hypoglycemia then seizure respiratory emergency we have airway obstruction and asthma cardiovascular emergency mi and antrena pectoris and drug related emergency they have overdose reactions and allergies so medical emergency management we need to start from the preventive side prevention is always better than cure so we need to be prepared always any patient as a potential medical emergency patient so we need to take a proper history so history taking the first part and properly recognizing the problem is the second one and effective management is the third one so we need to have all the facilities uh, in our clinic or wherever we are practicing and we need to have a thorough knowledge by seeing the symptoms we need to identify the diagnosis or identify the problem okay and we need to learn bls that is very much essential basic life support so that's all for now regarding the medical emergencies so i'll come up with a new topic in oral surgery thank you